Hey, what's up guys? Rudlinell here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. Let's fire up idle and not waste any time here. Let's get a control N to bring up a new window. Save this as, uh, grandfather. At least that's what I'm gonna call it as, grandfather. And we'll, uh, get our shebang line started. Set up our, our skeleton for the program. I don't think there has ever been a time in my life where I've actually typed all of that out correctly. But uh, anyway, let's get started. Let's get it create a let's create a new a new variable here. This is going to be another string because we're going to be looking with string functions in this tutorial, and we'll call this uh, shelf dot string, and we can change it to uh, this is a string, uh, isn't it? It it is right, and that's our string variable. All right. So now what we're going to be looking for today is at least what we're going to be looking at anyway, is the uh, string.count function. Now, the string.count function allows you to uh, to get the number of how many times another substring or a different string occurs within that string. So we call that the substring, and the string that we're searching for is obviously just denoted as a string. So in self.string.count, where we pass in like is, is is the substring, and it's going to count how many times we see that. And it, it, it is case sensitive, so we're going to find once in the this word, and then we have is, and then we have it, well, you'd think we'd have it here for isn't it, but see that I is capital, so it's not going to recognize that, and then we have that is right here. So we only have three occurrences of is. If we actually print this out, let's see what we got here. We got three. Okay, cool. So uh, let's try and recreate this on our own. Let's get a new function here. I'm going to call this, uh, what is it, was count? That's right, count, self, and then we need the string. And then we need, we'll call this the uh, the haystack, and we'll look for the needle. Needle in the haystack. So what we'll do here is we're going to need the length of each. So haystack length can be the length of a haystack. And now the needle can obviously be the needle length and that sort of thing. So now that we've got all the information we're going to look for, we're going to need to keep track of what we find, of how many times we found it. So let's try uh, total. Total can be our integer that's going to keep track of how many times we find this. So we'll loop through it and we'll count through the through these uh, through these characters here. For i in range, so while we're going through the haystack length, so we're going to loop through the original thing that we found here at least what we're searching for, and then we can test if the haystack 1, actually i, if what we found is equal to what we're looking for, also known as the needle, the needle, it's the start of it anyway, so if haystack i, what we've, what, the current thing that we're looking at is equal to the starting of the needle, we are under the impression that this is going to be another, uh, this is going to be a, an occurrence of that needle. So we have to check for it. So what we're going to do here is we can set end can be i plus and then uh, look for length. So needle length. So this is the current position and then we add on the length of what we're looking for. So if we get a substring of that though, we can do if, uh, let's see, haystack and then we're going to use our slicing here. We're going to use i to the end. And if that's equal to the needle or what we're looking for, then we can create a new thing here and just a new code block and uh, increment the total. And then when we're done looping, we can return the total to see how many we've got. So if we do, uh, it looks like that's all done now. If we can add it up in our constructor here, we can print self.count. We can pass in self.string, and we can look for is. If we run this, we get three. Now, if we uncomment the top one, it looks like they're both going to get th three. So what if we look for um, t? Five of them. 
Okay, that works. What if we looked for a space? What if we looked for a single space character? Nice. We get eight. What if we look for something that isn't in there? What if we look for a Z? We'll both be returned zero, because they can't find it. So there you go, guys. This is the function. It All it does, or at least this is one way of building that sort of thing. The way I've set it up is so we have the number, or at least we can loop through it, or we can count through the, uh, the current thing that we're looking through. And then if we find something, or at least we find a character that's the same as the start of what we're looking for, then we're going to be under the impression that, okay, this might be what we're actually looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that current position of our loop and add the needle's length to it. So then when we're actually slicing it, we can start from what we, where, we, where we were beginning, and then we can add on that uh, piece that could possibly very well be the needle. So we're checking to make sure it is the needle, and if it is, we can add to it because we found it. So that's the way that works. Uh, I hope that is understandable. I hope that's uh, easy to figure out and that sort of thing, but looks like that's all that we've got to cover today. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. It'd be cool if you could uh, like the video, maybe leave a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, maybe subscribe. I don't know. It's whatever you'd like to do. But uh, hey, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.